What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke. You're watching Strength Addicts TV on strengthaddicts.com and all social media platforms powered by blackstonelabs.com. Remember, loyalty is everything. And today, I'm very, very pleased to have with me a great force in the fitness industry, a Blackstone Labs sponsored athlete, a model, a mom, a wife, and so much more, Chelsea Sparkman. How are you, Chelsea? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> very good. Very good. And so um, we've been trying to do this now for about a week. And I'm <laughs> sorry, my schedule is crazy. Chelsea's schedule is crazy. But um, we're just going to talk about a lot of things here today. And uh, I'm so pleased to have you. So once again, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Definitely. So you come from a, a background with a lot of sports. Uh, you were telling me that you were always involved in some sport or other. Uh, tell us a little bit about the athleticism that you come from and discovering bodybuilding. Um, so basically, I played sports from the time I was two years old up until uh, pretty much high school. Um, I was really more involved with like um, volleyball. I played uh, select volleyball a lot of my life. Um, when I moved to a really small town, um, I actually got on the golf team <laughs> in my high school, um, which was really, really fun. Uh, never thought I would do that. Um, but my family was not always like, especially my mother. My mother wasn't really like into working out. She was always very um, hard on herself. And so in order to get her motivated, I'd be like, well, I'll go with you. So I always went with her, like after she had my sister, I actually have a 13 year old sister, which is kind of crazy. But after she had my sister, I uh, would go to like boot camps with her and stuff. And we actually started working out at our local gym with, um, a bodybuilder there. His name was Eric. I don't remember his last name, but that's kind of how I got introduced to it. Um, I think I was in eighth grade at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and he would always tell us like things and about supplements. And so I kind of always had it in the back of my head, like, wow, that's like really cool. You know, he would show me these fitness girls and I just always like kept it in the back of my head. Like, that's really awesome. Like I would really like to do that. Um, so that's kind of how I got started. And then, you know, later on in life is when I really, um, started like just falling in love with working out. Like I always liked it, right. but it was always more of like a, a sports thing. It wasn't really like a weightlifting thing. It was, you know, just more of like cardio and things like that instead of really working on like the weights. Um, that's, when I was about 18 is when I really started falling in love with weight training and, you know, things like that. I just didn't know quite yet, like how much nutrition was involved. You know, you don't really want to, you just think going in the gym for two hours, you're good. And then you can kind of eat whatever you want. That's not how it works. Right. And I think with women too, not to be sexist, but I think with women too, um, in the gym, a lot of women are cardio bunnies. A lot of women like minimal yeah. weights and, um, and guys too. Now guys maybe hit the iron a little bit more, but they really don't know what they're doing. You know, they don't know about nutrition. I mean, we're talking again, we're talking the, the, the average Jim Joe, Jim Jane, they don't know about macros and they don't know about pre-workouts and they don't know about like glycolog or recomp or products like those. They should, yeah. and they'll, you know, get a lot more gains, but, uh, they don't. So you started watching from what you told me, you started watching a lot of YouTube which, you know, back in the day, I mean, YouTube was it. I mean, it still is, but back in the day, especially, tell us a little bit about how you discovered PJ yeah. and the cast of characters back in those days. Yeah. So when I met um, my head, well, he's my husband now, but uh, we always were watching YouTube all the time. And so I discovered, I don't really know how I discovered mm. PJ and it was Aaron Singerman at the time. And Jason Genova I was, I would die laughing at their videos. And I would, I mean, I don't know, like I was just like captivated by, you know, how much PJ cared about, you know, helping Jason and all that stuff. And it was funny too, but at the same time, you know, I just, I don't know, there's something about him that just like, you know, caught my eye, you know, like just the way that he was. And so I kind of just followed him ever, ever since basically, um, before he even started Blackstone Labs, when he was still living in California with Amber. And I, I mentioned that to him. And he was like, whoa, you've been following me a long time. I was like, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. sad, but um, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I discovered them is through YouTube, you know, because Instagram wasn't a thing back then yet. I don't really remember when Instagram became a thing, actually. I think, I think, I think like, I think Instagram started like in 2012, I think something like that. I didn't get on <laughs> it for a while, but 
Um, yeah, I remember there's a video of, uh, of PJ Aaron and, uh, and Jason when they go to Publix. I, I always tell, I always find it hilarious how PJ told uh, uh, Jason to remember Uncle Ben, you know, the, uh, you know, yeah. the place, you know, it's hilarious. But the thing is, though, I have to be honest with you, though, I mean, you know, those videos are, are really what put a lot of people on the map, you know, uh, yeah. and when, he, you know, when they would, and Jason, again, you know, Jason, you know, PJ is the only one that wanted to work with Jason. You know, I don't think Aaron did. And I know, uh, the owner of Iron Mac Labs did not want to. So, I mean, yeah. back in the day. Uh, so PJ really stuck his neck out for Jason. And it was like, you know, that Uncle Ben story is funny. And like when they go into his kitchen, I mean, it was like pretty, like it was like like like, yeah. a, like a crime scene in there or something. It was like really bad kitchen. I mean, like, I don't know, like poor Jason, but I love Jason, but you know. But yeah, so those videos were huge. And then, uh, you know, the, you know, the thing with PJ, the thing is, is that he always loved coaching so much. And he loved, yeah. he, Bible, he, he got so close to the pro card that he, his, his, um, not to get off on a tangent here, but like what he provided on social media was then very rare. And today would probably still be very rare. You don't have those top national level competitors, like opening up like he did on those videos. So, yeah. And clearly it inspired you. So, uh, tell us a little bit about, and I'm, I'm a little uneasy about it cause it probably wasn't the greatest time for you. Like, but it's a learning process. What was it like? you know, finding your first coach? Because when you discovered PJ, he was already like out of the coaching scene, right? Yeah, I had actually emailed him right after he announced, which I guess I hadn't seen that, but announced mm -hmm. that he wasn't coaching anymore. Um, which maybe probably in hindsight was good, but at the same time, you know, I'm like, dang, I could have probably been competing for a long time, you know, by now, but um, that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really wanted to find someone that worked with me because I had seen so many people, especially women rebound and really mess up, you know, their bodies. And that's, I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to have a, you know, an eating disorder or a bad relationship with food. You know, I kind of already struggled with that my whole life. So I knew getting into it, it had to be the right person for me. Um, and so I found someone, but like I said, at, at that time I had just had my son and I had, I had some health issues with him while I was pregnant. And so afterwards I kind of was very insecure about the way I look. So I was doing all the wrong things just to lose weight, which was really, really bad. Um, so I found a coach and it just really didn't work out. Her name was Ty Sheets. She's actually from the Dallas area. She was a great, I mean, she's great. She's a, she's a pro. Um, I think she does. Oh, I think she does physique. I think. Um, Mm. but she really wanted me to do bikini. And at that time, I just, I really wanted to do figure. That's kind of what I always had my heart set on, even right when I started working with PJ. Um, so it just never worked out. I, it just never worked out. It was never the right time. And I was, I'm not one to push something if it's just not flowing like it should, especially something like that. I mean, that's a huge commitment. And that's, so. you know, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. You're fine. I was, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, I think what you said there, there's, there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, uh, you know, first and foremost, just because, you know, two people don't mesh well, you know, as client and coach does not mean that the client isn't hardworking and, you know, isn't committed and driven. Doesn't mean that the coach isn't great and, and savvy and, 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 and wise or whatnot. It just, you know, just sometimes there's just not that connection. And if you, you don't find the right person, uh, you, you know, things may never be, you know, the right situation. The other thing that you said too, that, you know, I thought was really important is that you don't want to force yourself. There's got to be a flow. Now that's not to say, you know, um, not to force yourself for one more rep, not to force yourself for four reps, not to, you know, uh, you know, just keep driving through, you know, that peak week diet when you want carbs and, or you want fats and you can't have them. Uh, that's not to say that you should indulge and that you shouldn't, you know, work your way through. But, but, but there is, there is such a thing as it not feeling right. And if it doesn't feel right, whether it's, you know, working with a coach or you're say you're lifting and it's just, you're, it, it, it's not a question of laziness. It's not a question of fatigue. It's like, you think one more lift, you're going to snap your bone off. That's not something that you should quote unquote work your way through. You know? Right. Right. So once that didn't work, and again, your, your, your heart set on figure and, you know, you couldn't talk about two divisions that were more different than one another. I mean, people, right, yeah. you, know, bikini, you know, there's some really, if you're, if you're able to compete in figure and bikini, you're at a really small show because those divisions are not, yeah. you know, you're talking about two totally different. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and you, with your volleyball background, I mean, I haven't seen your physique. Uh, I've seen your pictures on Instagram, which are amazing. But with your uh, volleyball background, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you could even jump in wellness maybe. But the thing is, bikini, yeah. though, you have to lose a lot of muscle, you know? Yeah, actually, at that time, I was about, I was about 126 pounds, no muscle because I had cardioed my muscle completely off mm -hmm. because I was so obsessed with losing the baby weight. Because with my son, just to go back to that a little bit, I had, um, for any moms out there, I had preeclampsia, which is, um, uh, well, it's like uh, you can seizure basically oh and die. I mean, not, not to be morbid, but um, yeah. I had gained about 30 pounds to 40 pounds of water within like three months. Um, so that's not good. So was I had, I had developed. Your first pregnancy or no? This was my first, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so I had developed hypertension and high blood pressure. So I was I have got put on bed rest and all this stuff. So afterwards, you know, they said it's only going to get worse before it gets better. So I was just I was so so uncomfortable in my own skin and so miserable that I was willing to do anything to feel normal again, which was the complete worst thing you could possibly do to your body. So any moms out there, don't do that. Just give yourself time. Just you know, relax, give yourself time. That's all I, that's the only thing I want to say for that. No, absolutely. And, and you know, in, in general, I mean, pregnancy aside, I'm sure pregnancy makes it harder. Uh, but women always have it harder losing weight than men and the body, you know, the body is really resilient and, and sometimes it's not, ugh, sometimes it's not resilient in a good way in the sense yeah. that, you know, you would think less calories, more work, lose weight, right? But not all the time. I mean, you could, I mean, there's women and there's men, there's people out there that starve themselves and will do cardio nonstop and will, and they still don't lose fat. So sometimes, and actually what's mind blowing is that, you know, some gurus will say, if you want to lose fat, you should eat more. And that just like blows people's minds. Yeah. Yeah. I've been pretty much any weight that you can possibly think of or any body type, I've been it. So I know, yeah. <laughs> I know. And I think what's important too that you had said earlier also, Chelsea, is that, you know, you don't want uh, the sport, whether it's competing or fitness modeling, you don't want that to create a bad relationship between you and food, especially if you had one before. Right. But even if you didn't have one before, this sport, you know, if not done correctly, could actually lead to eating disorders, you know, and, and, yeah. and could lead to, uh, you know, metabolic damage. So, I mean, you know, it, it's got to be done correctly. Uh, and again, that goes back to working with the right coach as well. And I'm not suggesting that your former coach had any issues with this, but like I know of competitors that have prepped with some pretty big names in the industry and they claim that they have metabolic damage as a result of it. Now, you know, that's a, some people say that's a myth and other people say it's a problem. I don't know, but uh, you have to work with the right person. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so with regards to 2019, 2019 seems to have been a very big year for you. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I know you said that during the Black Friday of that year, uh, I believe you said PJ had sent you some supplements and, and just that year was really pivotal for you in terms of your relationship with Blackstone Labs and in terms of your relationship with your physique and your training and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so at the be pretty much around this time is kind of when I decided to get back on my, you know, my fitness journey and kind of really pushing myself to where I really wanted to go. It's about time, you know, I'm 30 years old and it's time. Um, so uh, I had reached out to PJ cause I was, you know, ready to, I kind of just fell off of Instagram a little bit. Wasn't really following any fitness people just kind of needed a, a break from all of that, from looking at, you know, pick, you know, how people can filter their stuff. I just needed a mental break from, you know, the fitness industry basically. So I was, I was ready to get back into it, you know, kind of, ease my way back into it. And so I reached out to PJ asking him, you know, what did he think that I should do? You know, what should I get? And he was nice enough to just send me a big box of stuff and put me on a, a, a regimen, which was amazing. I was like, whoa, I didn't even think he was going to see my, my uh, DM. So that was even more surprising. And um, we kind of kept in touch a little bit throughout that time. You know, I would ask him questions here and there, I'd, you know, follow him on his cardio and Q and A's, you know, stuff like that. And then come Black Friday, he did this giveaway and we, me, me and my husband already bought a bunch of stuff. And he was like, if you spend X amount of dollars, you know, you'll get put into this, this contest to win free coaching for the BPJ, um, for the, for the BPJ. So I was like, well, I was like, we've already spent this much. Might as well spend, you know, a few hundred bucks more. So, um, I actually ended up winning, which was amazing. I was jumping up and down in my in-laws kitchen, you know, freaking out. 
because I was like, wow, it's like 10 years later, I finally get to work with PJ. Hmm. Um, So then basically we did, you know, he asked me what my goals were, what my ultimate goals were. I was like, well, like, you know, I've always wanted to compete. You know, I keep saying it for years and years, probably like 10 years I've been saying I'm going to compete. So I haven't done it. So I was like, you know, I really want to do it. That's, you know, kind of what I want to do. I want to see what I, you know, am made of. So he was like, okay. Um, and at the time I didn't know if he, he probably didn't know if how serious I was or how good I could follow a diet. You know, he, he was probably hesitant, you know, trying to see who I was, you know, fill me out a little bit. So, um, <clears throat> we started doing a mock prep basically. And he, he, I think a couple weeks into it or after my body started to really, really change, he was like, okay, he's like, I, I think you'd be really good for wellness actually. And I was like, really? I was like, man, I really want to do figure. Like that's. I just love the figure look. I don't know what it is, but the way I'm built is more wellness for sure. Now that I see it and I'm seeing them compete now, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's definitely my body type, which, Hey, it worked out perfectly. Cause they just brought that here, wow. which is kind of crazy. Cause I was kind of, I wasn't really bikini, but I wasn't figure. So it's like, I really never fit into a category. Um, so, uh, towards the end, um, he really, he kept saying, wow, like, I can't believe like, you know, you're changing this much. And really throughout it, I lost maybe, um, let's see, I lost maybe, uh, 15 pounds. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it was, and five pounds of it was water at the very end. I mean, I had really only lost, I was staying at the same weight for weeks and he was just kind of mind blown because my body was changing, but I was at the same weight. Um, so at the very end, he was very, very impressed. And a couple weeks afterwards, you know, he said, I, you know, I'm very impressed with you. I, I'm, I can't believe your dedication. I was not expecting that. And, you know, I want to sponsor you. And I, I was very much, I was, I was probably speechless and I'm never speechless. So that was, that was kind of crazy. That's awesome. You know, and, and again, you know, he, when he sees dedication and, and he sees that his people work hard uh, be they sponsored athletes, uh, be they members of the Legion, uh, you know, he really, really uh, like rewards that, you know, and he also really rewards his athletes who stay on their plan, you know, who don't cheat. And if they cheat, that they be honest with him so he could fix the mistakes, you know, but um, that's a really big deal. And so the fact that you're a sponsored athlete is huge. I mean, absolutely huge. Um, Tell us a little bit about the uh, 30th uh, birthday present to yourself with uh, Mr. Orangutan. Well, okay. So before I started with PJ, that was my goal. Like I was just going to get in shape, you know, get to where I was like comfortable. And I was going to, you know, I had already talked to Christina, like emailed them back and forth before I had even won the beat PJ thing. Um, And I was like, okay, I'm going to get in shape. I'm this is my goal. Like I'm going to, do a diet and I, and I want to shoot with them. That's what I want to do. And then I ended up winning, you know, I was second place in the f- finale of the BPJ. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I can't remember the, what's, was it? No, it wasn't Jason. I can't remember the guy that won, but I was second place. And so I got to shoot with the orangutan, which was, I didn't even have to buy it. So that was even better. Like I got my 30th birthday present, you know, so that was pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, orangutan is like probably like one of the, like, like, like one of the best photographers, you know, in the whole industry. I mean, this, the, the pictures are total fire and, and I love, I love the relationship. At least I, I don't know them, but that I see on Instagram, like I was telling you, uh, him and his wife seem like just madly in love with each other. And I think that is so yeah. cool because again, I mean, you know, and, and how secure she is because I mean, you know, have all, I mean, she's gorgeous, but you have all these beautiful women coming in and out and it's like, you know, I mean, you have to have a really, really strong, you know, uh, relationship to be able to do that, you know, and, and it's just like, I, I just think, and the work is so spectacular. I mean, it's not a question of, you know, I'm sure they have the best lenses. I'm sure they have the best lights and, and yeah. you know, the, 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 um, the backdrops and the, in other words, like the, the scenery at, at I think it's yeah. like, wherever it may be, it's, it's second to yeah. none, but it's just, it's just like that whole, it's like the, it, everything comes together to put out the perfect photo. You know what I mean? It's like, you, yeah. every element's got to be there. You know, it's an experience. It's, it's a, com- I was very nervous thinking going into it. As soon as you get there, it's just very calming. You, you, mm-hmm. because I did a lot of stuff that's not that you cannot put on the internet, but, it was very much 
very professional, but it was, it was a complete experience just being there. Just, it, it was unlike anything I've ever done before. Hmm. No, and, and it's, it's great. You know, that Instagram has like the only fan section, which I think is really cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with sexuality. I don't really see a problem with it. I know, obviously, you know, anyone under 18, yeah, you don't want them to see, I get that, you know, but, but, but that aside, um, I, I, I feel like America is a very puritanical type country. Like it's very, very backward in a lot of, in a lot of regards. And it's like, Oh no, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to like be like a moral like authority here, but I just think that, uh, you know, there's, like you said, it's done in a professional manner and, and there's like, there's things you can't share on social media, but they're artistic. You know what I mean? And they're not like yeah trashy. And even if it is trashy, so what? That's okay too. But I'm just saying like, you know, but I just think the fact that they have just that perfect, you know, collection of, and skill. I mean, skill is of course, definitely part of it, you know, but uh, I think that's an awesome 30th birthday present for yourself. And, uh, and like, you had also talked a little bit about the like mental breaks and I think those are really important too. Uh, and I've even told PJ, you know, I, I love his cardio Q and A's. I love them. But like, you know, when you're doing two a day of those things every single day. It's like, you know, it, 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 I feel like it could be overwhelming. Like, I feel yeah. like, you know, there might be like, all right, guys, I'm not going to do it for a week. That would be at least me. I would take a week or maybe even a month. And I'd just be like, I'll see you in a month. Because it's important, I think, to have that sort of this is overwhelming. This goes with you everywhere. These phones yeah, it's, go it's a, everywhere. Yeah. It's a false reality. A lot of the time I try to really have fun with my social media and just really put out stuff. That's me. I, I really try not to filter my things. You know, if you, if you, if you don't like me, I like the story feature of it because I feel like it shows your personality. Mm. You can't hide your personality. You can't really hide who you are. I mean, you can do boomerangs all day if you want. But I feel like there's something to be said for someone that can literally just be exactly who they are, whether it's goofy or if you think it's stupid, whatever. I really appreciate people that put it all out there like that, even if it's stupid or dumb. Like I, I, I would much rather see someone's personality than a picture they posted. And as, and sorry, but a stupid caption that's like really long. That's something they copied and pasted. Like I, I just, I just, I appreciate the honesty and the realness of a lot of people that I follow. What, what I, what I love too. And I, it's like the, it's my favorite hashtag is no filter. And I know sometimes people like filters, but it's like, it's such a lot down. Like if you, or, or even worse, like some, some photographers will airbrush the hell out of a, out of a model, uh, male or female. And like, yeah, I mean, nobody's going to look exactly like they do on social media, but if you walk up to one of your favorite influencers, and you're saying right next to them and you don't know it, that's bad. Like, like in other words, yeah. if nothing like they do on social media, that's bad. You know what I mean? So, yeah. again, that's why I, I totally, uh, you know, back up your, your transparency, uh, you know, comment. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, too, is like, I don't know if you're going to compete next year or the year after, but I think you want to compete because it's something you want to do. As long as it's something you want to do, it's great. But for people that think, that you have to compete like competing is a stepping stone to making it that could not be farther from the truth in fact a lot of influencers have never even been in contest shape i mean that has to be something you want to do i mean you're doing six right. of prep, posing in the mirror manipulating your calories you know doing cardio for 10 seconds on stage it has to be something you want to do and how far you go right. with it is on you you know yeah. so Tell us a little bit more about your modeling though. Like, because you've done a lot of modeling, you've done a lot of acting, you've done a lot of everything in that, in that world. And uh, I think, so I, I think I've definitely done a lot more acting than I have the modeling portion of it. Um, I've kind of always been into like being on stage and acting and being a different character. And, and, and I will say like when I was younger, I was a lot more shy than I am now. Um, but my mom always pushed me cause she knew that I really enjoyed it, but I was also very much in my comfort zone and never really wanted to leave or was scared of what people thought. Now I could care less, but back then I did a lot of, um, improv classes, um, monologue classes. I did musical theater. I actually tried out for Disney, <laughs> which was a very huge experience. I, I will imagine. never forget that. Um, it was a lot. Tell, um, tell, tell us about Disney a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, so my agency I was with at the time, um, I went to Houston and basically, you know, 
it's kind of like an all day thing. So everyone comes in from everywhere. Like it's an open call basically. Mm -hmm. And Disney characters, if you notice, can all sing, dance and act. They're Mm -hmm. the triple threat, which is what everyone Mm -hmm. wants. So, um, I cannot dance at all. (laughs) So I already knew. Yeah. I can't, I mean, I can silly dance, but I can't dance. There's, I was in dance, but I was not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like the old dad, like on the, on the dance floor, but, um, so you have to prepare a monologue and I, I wish I could remember what monologue I did. I, I can't remember what monologue I did, but I did do, um, the singing part was hilarious. Um, you're, you, you, you're in a huge room, the lights are all in, you're up there by yourself and it's like acapella basically. Oh my God, I was, I was just going to say, I hope it's not acapella. I hope you have some kind of music to go on. It's wow. basically acapella. You you do have a little bit of a background track, okay. but it's mainly acapella. I mean, that track is not loud, so it's mm. it's all you. And um, I remember getting up there and being very nervous. Um, and with my vocal coach, like I had no problem singing, but when it came to like getting up in front of everyone like that in a very intimate setting was very intimidating. And I just remember getting off the stage, and my mom looks at me and she goes, "You laughed." And I'm like, what? I laughed. She was like, you laughed in the middle of you singing. <laughs> like, that's how nervous you were. And I was like, I don't even remember anything of what just happened. So that, you know, it was an experience, you know, I didn't, I didn't make it. It's okay. But uh, it was definitely an experience I'll never forget. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. And you, oh, yeah. you do do an interview process. I forgot at the end, you'd kind of go and talk to like a ton of different it wasn't just Di- like Disney was the main people that were there, but I think there were a bunch of other people there wow. too. I mean, yeah, that's one of those things, even if you don't make it, the experience to go through that, yeah. I mean, most actors, I'm sure, I mean, you know, you can go read for a part or something like that, but to go through that whole process, I mean, Disney is it. I mean, that's like, there's no, there's no higher. Yeah. So, I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And so with regards to now, I mean, with regards to what you want to do in the fitness industry, and other industries. I mean, like, what, what do you see? Like, what's your, I hate asking these questions because it's so hard to tell what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone like a year, five or 10, but what, what would you like to accomplish, say in the next five years with regards to everything, Blackstone modeling act, just everything. What would you like to, and competing quite possibly? Yeah, I definitely want to compete. I, I'm definitely not looking at making competing a career per se. Um, but I definitely think that it can, you know, help you a little bit, but, um, I definitely want to get more into like fitness modeling and stuff like that. Um, and maybe some public speaking. I don't know. Um, I just, I just know that like through my fitness journey, I've been through a lot of different obstacles and, and just a lot of like mental, you know, struggles and things like that. And for women, I feel like it's so hard and you do, I mean, you have people on social media that are talking about it and talking about, insecurities in the industry and things like that. But I think also um, there just needs to be more awareness brought to it. I feel like, you know, people really talking about not just on Instagram, you know, like I just, I just want there to be a little bit more discussion about like competing and things like that. And just being more secure. I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of insecurity right now. And I feel like there needs to be more women being secure with who they are. I just feel like there's a lot of fakeness out there especially with social media. I feel like there's a problem with that. No, absolutely. Uh, and I think a lot of women too, for whatever reason, uh, maybe you're acting certain roles because they think those are the roles that maybe men want to see them in, or maybe the industry wants to see them in. And if you have to act uh, in such a way that it's totally not who you are to make it, then maybe you'll make it. But at the end of the day, like, like what have you really accomplished? You've made it. Right. Basically, you know, you've, when do you get right. to be you kind of thing, you know? So I think that's important. And I, I, I definitely think there's like a certain pressure element also. Um, so yeah, that would be great if you could do that. You know, that'd be awesome. I was just thinking maybe you could do a podcast. I don't know. Do you know, do you know uh, Barbie De La Sancho, Willow Beast? Yeah, yeah, I love her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you do a podcast with her or something like that. Like, like two yeah. girls do a podcast, both with Blackstone. I mean, I don't know, something like that could be pretty yeah. cool. I don't know. But I, I just think you have a lot to say and she had a lot to say. And, and I, I've talked to a lot of ladies that have a lot to say too. And like, as much as, you know, I love PJ and as much as I love myself, cause you got to love yourself, you know, yeah. us guys, we can't, you know, um, we can't, 
put content out that is like that hits that like basically it hits the uh the nail on the head for women you know what i'm saying like it almost has to be a woman that's you know what I mean? So I think like more women in, in broadcasting, podcasting, you know, videos, that's a good thing. So I think that's, that's something that maybe you could do potentially, you know? Yeah. I need to move out of where I'm at first. Cause I have like no internet service out there. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. That's rough. So where do you live now? You live, don't, don't say the city though. Cause there may be like, uh, you know, uh, creeps. Fans. Yeah. But where more, where more or less do you live? Like what region? Uh, East Texas. Okay, cool. And since Texas yeah. is the second largest state, good luck trying to find her. So right, good stuff. Right. yeah, but I love Texas. You know, I've never been there. I don't think, but uh, I haven't been there. I'd love to go to Austin. I'm very liberal, and they seem to have like all sorts of like art and like they have no zoning laws there, which I love. So it could be like a business, a house, a shoe store, a bar. Right. It's like perfect. I love that. Well, and they have really, really good food. Very Dude, good yeah. food. And also, um, Denton County, Denton, the city of Denton, it's smaller, but it's becoming like a mini Austin. It's very artsy. I'm kind of from that area. So, oh, um, nice. yeah, yeah, that's where UNT is and all of that stuff. It's very artsy. It's becoming a, a mini Austin. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. I, there's so yeah. many cities in Texas I'd like to go to. Corpus Christi I'd like to go to. Yeah. Uh, there's supposed to be, a, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. They've been talking about it for a long time, a bullet train between Houston and Dallas. Uh, yeah, they just signed off on it. I just don't know when it's going to start happening. Okay, because all my friends in Texas say it's like a three, three and a half hour drive. This train will get you there in an hour. Like, like that's insane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then, of course, I want to go to San Antonio, like the Alamo, yeah. which is like, I mean, that's like one of the, like, like historically, like one of the, I mean, I mean, those guys never surrendered. I mean, they were half nuts to do that, but that's like, you know, that's amazing. Right. Cars are at. So I'd love to go to those places. I mean, Texas is just, just beautiful. And there's so many NPC shows in Texas. And I would yeah. think like, between your fitness modeling, your work with Blackstone, you know, your public speaking interests, I mean, you could really do a lot of good there. I mean, that's the home of Ronnie Coleman after all. So I mean, you could do like right. a lot of cool stuff in Texas. So I really want to thank you. I, I, I think I told you that this was going to take 10 or 15 minutes. No, you're right. sure it's taking longer, but it's been really, really cool. Now, I did want to ask you about your favorite Blackstone products because I got my Dust V2 here. But everybody knows my favorite is Glycolog and Trojan Horse, and of course Euphoria, which is like basically illegal. Right. But what are your favorites? Just because I know that you like a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I really try not to do a lot of stimulants, like pre workout. Like, I, everyone thinks I'm weird, but I don't really like to drink. I have an issue drinking that much stuff before I work out, but I do like hype. I do like that. Um, I love Carnitrim. I do love current trim for my cardio sessions and I love Glycolog, obviously that's like everyone's main product. Um, but what I really, what I really liked and I used it on, uh, the BPJ and he kind of kept it a secret at first, but I, I loved chosen one. That was a huge, a huge factor in a lot of, uh, growth for me in my physique. And I was shocked, but, um, that's, uh, we aren't using it anymore. Like as soon as we stopped, uh, a, the BPJ was over. We stopped using it, but I really loved that product. I That's saw a amazing. lot from that. Yeah. So the one product I've heard a lot of ladies say is Harmonize. They really like. I you know, yeah yeah. I don't have good. a lot of um. I don't have a lot of uh, hormonal issues, but I still I still use it. But yeah. um, I think a lot of ladies that have a lot of issues with like their skin and all of that stuff um really love that product. Definitely, definitely. No, I really like it. And there's another one that I tried. Paraburn was pretty good. But yeah. I mean, in terms of caffeine, though, like the Dust V2 is just like really, really good. And uh, and believe it or not, I, I tried the Dust, the old Dust, the one, you know, the old one. This one here, the V2 is just as good. I really, really like it. So yeah, um, I just got to be careful because I take more than one or two scoops and like I'm like pretty much amped up all day. Uh, right. And in this office where I, I, sh I tape these shows, I mean, there's a window, but it's always closed. So sometimes I, when I get out of here, it's like four in the morning and it's like, where did the day, I mean, I, I got in here like at six o'clock in the afternoon or in the yeah. evening, four in the morning. So yeah, but listen, I really want to thank you so much for doing this. And, uh, you know, when I first asked you, you were down in Boca with PJ and you were shooting, you're doing a bunch of stuff. And, and I think he said he showed you the ocean, which you've got to see in Florida. You must see the ocean. Yes. We'll see. My whole family is from Sarasota. Okay. which is on the other side, on the yeah. Gulf side. But I grew up uh, going to Siesta Key Beach all the time. So, yeah. and the beach is my happy place. I'm trying to get my husband transferred there. 
Very cool. Very cool. So I want to thank you very, very much. If you can, you know, share your social media links, any websites and any final message. And, uh, and again, thank you very, very much. Yeah, no problem. Do you want me to share it right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, my Instagram is let's get sparked up. So it's let's get underscore sparked up. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> that's it for now. For now, you must, you must come out with a website. I'm not a huge believer in websites because a lot of people don't go yeah. to websites, but I do think that you should do something, either podcast, maybe write an ebook. I, I'm a name dropper. I hope she doesn't mind. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Kayla Tybersky, years ago, she was writing ebooks. She's a figure competitor. Didn't go pro, I don't think. And she was making several thousand dollars a month just writing ebooks. You know? Wow. Yeah, and it was all fitness based. But I think with what you're talking about would be fitness based. But you could also talk about your pregnancy. You could talk about losing the pounds after pregnancy, doing it the right way, finding the right coach. The mental breaks. I mean, there's so much that you could talk about. You know, you could frame it for women, but it could apply to men as well. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. Uh, you have, yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah, you have a lot of life experience and you have something to say. And that's a perfect, and I like doing this with the hands. I don't know why I'm very, yeah. I'm Spanish. You know, we use our hands like as much as Italians, but like, I just really feel like that's a really good, a really good thing to write about. People will read that. They will like, yeah. oh, also, also you can check out my OnlyFans. It's Lee Sparks. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Very, very cool. So check out her OnlyFans. What is it? Lee Sparks. Okay. And then your Instagram? Let's get sparked up. Perfect. And your discount code at Blackstone? Uh, let's get sparked up, just like my Instagram. There you go. All right. So thank you very, very much for fitness model, actress, soon to be competitor, hopefully soon to be podcaster and writer. Chelsea Sparkman, this is Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com. Yeah.